what are the different ways for people to become aware of and shift their mental models so that they are more open to new possibilities? That question. That, that's the general question. Yes. And then if you say, say there were six of them, how would you kind of drill down uh, into specific so one research question might be, so what are the different ways by which people develop their mental models through the years? Okay. No? Then maybe one is, uh, what are the different ways by which, uh, what is happening in the environment or that makes it difficult to change your mental models? And then a third would be, what are the different ways by which people are able to shift their mental models? That kind, and then maybe, how do you know that people's mental models have changed? What are the different ways of Evaluation. yes so recognizing the first this? One is historical, no? how yeah. did uh, those mental models emerge? Yeah. Second is maybe sort of social or interpersonal. No? how do are those mental models reinforced? Yes, especially in a specific culture. Especially within a culture. Yes. Uh, and then third. Uh, interventions. No? Yeah. How can you switch? How, how, how do you get that person to pivot or switch? Yeah. Or transition to a different model? And then how do you measure? It? Yes. How, what are your thoughts no? um, uh, for the second item? When uh, an individual moves to a different location, no? a mm -hmm. different country, a different culture, uh, so you have some work in that. No? How are mental models retained or uh, let go of by that physical move to a different culture and location? There could be two sources of data, mm -hmm. at least in my experience right now. First, the OFWs <laughs> yeah, yeah. from the provincia mm -hmm. to Europe, for example. Mm -hmm. no? There are those who are able to shift and there are those who are stuck. Uh -huh. And then if you go here, study the indigenous people, some of them went lowland mm -hmm. to Manila to Manila, and they don't want to go back anymore mm -hmm. and there are also indigenous people who go down and just want to come back mm -hmm. and reinforce this I think there are less of this but there are I met some of them in Mount Kitanglad where the daughter of a chief was educated outside but is now a passionate champion of their culture She's an artist and she works with the youth to send the message that our culture is treasure and we must protect and, you know, share it with others. Wait, so in your example, in transferring to Europe, is it from provincial to cosmopolitan? Yeah, what? yeah. So to me, it's not too much. Dano. It's what happened along the way. Because there are people there, for example, let's say in Europe, who refused to learn the language of the place, uh -huh. who refused to, I, to even change the way they eat. So it's very problematic because the ingredients they're used to in the Philippines cannot be found there. So, so one ano, is assimilation and non-assimilation. Yes, yes. Or those who come home. No, I've worked with the students at DAP. Her thesis or her what do they call it, uh, they have a term for it, mm -hmm. is about how do you increase the probability so that an OFW will really want to come home and will actually share what they've learned mm -hmm. with the field. That is her, her study. No? And part of her answer, her strategy, was to create an app mm -hmm. so that before the OFW leaves, mm -hmm. his or her family here, they actually plan together. Mm -hmm. They know how much he will earn or she, they plan how much of it he would retain, how much of it will be saved, how much of it will be sent home, how much of it will be invested. And that is all recorded in the app. So while the OFW is there, the family can actually see it and they can converse. They, so here it, the OFW is not alone anymore. The family may be physically distanced, but the family is actually joining with him or her and they can actually converse. So, okay, so you, are, you cannot hide, neither can you hide it at home, what you're doing with the money. Because it's, 
and her strategy, her contribution to this was the creation of an app. So there's a translocal consciousness. Yes. You know? Both fa family members in both locations mm. feel uh, feel that they're navigating between both. Yes. Locations and cultures. Yes. And economies. Yes. But pesos dito, euros don. Ah, uh, pero na intindi ano taga dito euro. Na intindi ano euro. Na kumikita ng euro. Ano epekto nong sa piso? And the beauty of this is that she used the tools we taught in transformational leadership in learning communities, which is rooted in BL. She used the processes to come up with the app. And I have the paper because I was the advisor precisely because they knew that I was working with OFWs. And when I realized what her new possibility was, of course I said, I'll work with you. And I was really happy to see that hey, the tools that started with BL actually work. And look at this. This new. The project is not over. No, because of the academic duration, she was able to finish up to stage three. But I think she will continue up to stage five because the whole group, OWA, her boss herself, were in support of the project because they saw the potential. They saw the potential.